ahoy everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm a professional software engineer and an operating systems enthusiast. And while this opinion is somewhat, I'm not going to say controversial, but maybe unpopular uh, within many of the circles that I frequent, I think that there is a place in the market, so to speak, for an operating system like Chrome OS, where its primary function is to browse the web. Now, I have plenty of problems with the web, uh, with the internet, um, that I'm not going to get into in this video, but I'm just going to say it's highly inefficient, and with every year that goes by, it becomes increasingly inefficient, which means that older machines, which in theory uh, are perfectly capable of running the kind of software that most people would want to run on their machines, um, are very quickly becoming out of date. And I think that if I had to choose between native apps or web applications, I personally would choose native applications almost every time. I even personally feel comfortable using a computer, a Linux machine, uh, with nothing but the terminal. Um, however, I understand that most people would choose the internet. The internet is the primary purpose through which most people use their computers. And so, I believe that investing time in trying to find a software solution uh, to the problem of aging computers um, is a worthwhile investment. Therefore, if I had a complaint with Chrome OS, it's, it's not that I think that the fundamental premise is in any way mistaken, it's rather the execution. Uh, most people think of and rightfully make fun of Chrome OS for only running websites, but that's not 100% true. Most Chromebooks today come with Android app support out of the box. Um, they also come with Linux uh, app support, believe it or not, through um, some degree of Docker virtualization. But if I wanted to get a little bit nitpicky, I would argue that the window manager itself probably causes quite a few issues. Um, I don't remember exactly what kind of computer it was, but it was a desktop computer, a Dell from approximately 2009-2010, and I attempted to install the 32-bit version of Cloud Ready, which at the time was a build of Chromium OS that was specifically designed to run on non-Chromebook devices. And I remember that the window manager itself had quite a few issues, just because it was, it was very graphically oriented. Um, there were lots of, probably, examples of bloat in the system. And while I, I genuinely have a deep respect for aesthetics in computing, I think that a beautiful machine, an efficient machine, is a machine that people will generally want to use. Um, I honestly wonder how useful a fully-fledged Windows-like window manager might be to someone who just wants to browse the web. Now, I understand that there's some degree of familiarity in this, but at the same time, if you notice on many of the machines that uh, only run Chrome, there's some degree of redundancy. What's the point of having a taskbar if you have multiple tabs in your web browser anyway? I think that there are some potentials to redesigning the system in such a way that existing computer users won't be confused, it'll be very natural to them, but at the same time, we're not going to have to suffer from the slowdown on these older machines that a proper, fully-fledged window manager may introduce. And so I decided to begin an experiment. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware of Alpine Linux. If you haven't heard of it before, I highly recommend checking it out. It is a Linux distribution that is specifically designed to be run on tiny systems. In fact, it's one of the predominant distributions that gets bundled in with Docker images. And um, if you don't know what Docker is, that is definitely a worthwhile rabbit hole. Regardless of what your feelings towards Docker are, it's useful to understand what it is and why it's used. Um, but essentially, it allows people to build containers. It is a containerization tool. Uh, people can build containers to put single applications in, most often websites, so that you can run 20 different instances of a website on a single machine. Each of those websites thinks it's the only thing running on the computer, so if one of them were to fail, another one takes its place. Um, and Alpine is uh, its much more efficient at this particular use case than something a little bigger, like Ubuntu might be, or even Debian. It's not exactly designed to run on a desktop, but I decided that because it's exceptionally lightweight and RAM friendly, it would be an interesting core distribution to build the system on top of. As you can see, my assistant is going to be demonstrating the machine. 
So what you're looking at right here is a Dell Latitude 120L. It was a low-end business machine even back in 2006 when it was released. Um, it comes with an Intel Celeron M380 processor, uh, it's single core, clocked at 1.6 gigahertz, obviously 32-bit. Um, it does have a graphics adapter, but it only has 128 megabytes of VRAM. I bought it with Windows XP installed, which obviously is not an operating system you want to run on the modern web. So if you're curious about trying Alpine Linux yourself, uh, there are some videos out there that do a much better job of explaining it than I could in this video. I will also be including links to the installer uh, instructions in the description below. Um, but essentially what I did is I installed Alpine Linux on the machine, and then I installed Firefox, um, I set up the X windowing server, and I also installed DWM. I really genuinely wish I could have installed this with, without any kind of window manager at all. Uh, but I chose DWM because, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but you can actually run uh, single applications as the only thing on an X server. You don't actually need a window manager. However, Firefox itself runs into some issues unless you have a window manager. So I decided to choose a tiling manager that was extremely small and was going to offer a negligible um, system resources hit. So right now, as you can see, I have YouTube, a Google Docs, and Discord opened. Um, it's sluggish. It's definitely sluggish. However, it's also very usable. I'm going to go window over into HTOP to show you what the system resources look like. And you'll notice it's hovering at just a little bit over one gigabyte out of two gigabytes of RAM. And that's actually really nice. Now, I wouldn't recommend this as a daily driver for almost anyone, um, but it's kind of nice to know that if you strip a system down, uh, you can do some basic web browsing with exceptionally small amounts of system resources. To other developers out there, if you have any particular configurations that you might set up on a machine, if you wanted it to be uh, really efficient at running a web browser and absolutely nothing else, uh, what other configurations would you try? I'm genuinely curious because I might put one of them on the Dell Latitude in the future and see how it goes. I might, if I feel crazy, do some benchmarking. Who knows? Anyway, that's all for now. This is the moment where usually you'd probably want to click off. All I'm going to say is if you want to see these kind of videos in the future, uh, feel free to subscribe. Um, or not. There's no obligation to. This is a new channel, so do what you want. Regardless, I hope to be seeing you guys in the future. Bye.